Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Kimmy Kato Show. I'm your uh, co-host here today. I'm Kimmy's co-host. I'm Jeremiah. And I just want to welcome everybody back to a great show. I also wanted to thank Kimmy, the listener. Do you know you have, you're building a fan base right now. I, I was actually looking on SoundCloud and you had the top four shows. You're beating out my show. You're beating out the Arwen Lewis show. You're killing it, my friend. Congratulations. Thank you, Jeremiah, for being really nice. I appreciate <laughs> it's it. the truth. It's, if you want, it's tell, I sent Michelle a, a, <laughs> I <laughs> screenshot that. I sent it to Michelle. So if you don't believe me, have her show you. Um, I'm, I'm such a great show, Kimmy. And, and today's guest that you have uh, invited on the show, I am so thrilled and so excited to hear more about his uh, his business. I'm not gonna. I don't want to give it away because I'm gonna let you do the introduction right now. But uh, take it away, Kimmy. Uh, okay. Let's get straight to it. I'm excited. Okay. okay. So today we are delving into the realm of sake. Joining us today is a very special guest, someone who knows about sake inside out. Uh, please welcome Genki Ito, the CEO of Tipsy.sake.com tipsysake.com, which operates the largest online Japanese sake stores in the U.S. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Nice to meet you. I'm Genki. There's a lot of applause going on in the background. Woo! You just can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Genki-san, just sit back and relax while I embarrass you. I'm going to talk about what you've done so far. I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to, read, uh, I'm going to talk about your profile. Um, in 2009, Genki Ito made the move to the United States, dedicating nearly a decade to the Japanese food industry. Following his completion of an MBA pro program at the University of Southern California in 2018, Genki embarked on a new venture, founding Tipsy Inc. and launching an online sake platform, tipsysake.com. With the support from investors and venture capitalists, both in Japan and the US, Tipsy aims to revolutionize the American market for sake by making it more accessible, prioritizing consumer experience and education, and reshaping the perception of the entire category through strategic rebranding efforts. So, Jeremiah, who better than Genki? to guide us through the intricacies of sake. The intricacies of, <laughs> of sake. Yeah, it's is a, a bit difficult to say. It is a bit difficult, but it sounds like we've already tried some sake. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I can't say it tipsy. <laughs> No one could be better, Kimmy. Well done. Well, what, what a great guest. Thank so, you. Welcome. So whether, whether you're an enthusiast or you know, a seasoned enthusiast like you, Jeremiah, or a curious newcomer, we promise uh, we promise you an hour uh, of, of it full of insights, stories, and of course, taste of Japan's iconic beverage. And I will be pairing our conversation on sake with some Japanese jazz music. So here we go. Yeah, it's All a right. great soundtrack, by the way. So, it's almost like uh, you're in the music business, Kimmy. Um, yeah, I try. <laughs> I try. So, Genki, thank you for coming on the show. Of course. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, can you quickly tell us what Tipsy is about? So, Tipsy is the uh, e-commerce business that I founded about five years ago um, after uh, finishing my graduate school. Uh, and uh, I have always been in the sake and Japanese food business for over 10 years in the U.S., I'm originally from Japan, by the way, and uh, I started, uh, I wanted to start promoting sake more in the U.S. market because what I saw while working for this Japanese food importer, uh, consumers were uh, more um, interested in sake, uh, you know, uh, more and more in recent years. And then I really believe that there's a, a huge potential market for sake because uh, if you really uh, start drinking sake, you understand that. It's, it's just like wine. There's a lot to learn about it. There's different um, uh, variety, regionality. So it's very interesting. And then, you know, once you taste the great 
quality sake, you will become a fan. And then that's what I saw, um, you know, back when I was working for a different company. So that I wanted to start a business on my own to promote this uh, beautiful Japanese beverage category. Great. Congratulations on the launch. You know what success. I love about this is you're right. It's like wine, like sake. When I, when I have had or enjoyed sake at restaurants, and I'm a novice at it, but uh, drinking it, but I do enjoy it. Um, but I've never been out with anybody that could really kind of tell me the rich history mm. and uh, of sake and uh, the history in Japan because it, it goes back, I think like uh, 720 AD or something. Yeah, two thousand. So it goes back two thousand years. So not only is there is a traditional, uh, you know, a deep, tr rich, beautiful tradition, right? Like you said, Kimmy, mm -hmm. but it also comes with this beautiful tradition of how it's served and how it should be enjoyed and there's stories there aren't there there's mm -hmm. a lot of Absolutely. good stories there which i would love to have genki talk about uh but before we go into that as well for our listeners who might not be familiar with sake i would love to hear what sake is you know to the basics of sake what the heck is sake all right yeah you just simple words it's a uh, fermented beverage, just like wine. It's uh, brewed alcohol, uh, like beer and wine. It's not distilled like vodka or tequila. So what uh, brewed mean is that it's, it's, um, it's uh, alcohol uh, that's produced by fermentation. And then, you know, the ingredients that sake uses are rice, koji, yeast, and water. Just four ingredients, that's all. So that's what... Uh, um, the Japanese government defines as seishu. Uh, uh, it's Japanese in, ja in Japanese. That's that's sake. So that's what it is. It's a simple fermented beverage. Um, can you only call sake? This is a, I've always kind of wondered. Um, is sake called, or can you only call it sake if it's only made in Japan? Uh, yes, uh, sort of, because the government uh, defines sake or you know, they, they don't use the words S A K E sake. It's they they use seishu, seishu um, right? But the seishu has to be produced in Japan mm -hmm. using the Japanese ingredients. So that's why uh -huh. I, that that's what they want to do to protect the um you know the, the tradition tradition yeah. and the value for right. the category. Right. They don't want like some you know overseas like oh, foreigners okay. making sake somewhere oh. else and call it seishu and then export it to Japan to take over the market. So that's I guess that's how they try to protect the market right so, so i'm sorry jeremiah i know that you really wanted to start a sake <laughs> distillery but you can't oh, the, sorry the, the, the brewery like i said seishu is what japanese government this i'll you know, leave it to the professionals sake <laughs> but uh, you know as you know sake s-a-k-e it's a, a simple word that describes Alcohol. the type of rice wine oh, right. you know, we don't okay. want to call it rice wine because it's not wine it's more closer to, to beer uh the way they produce it is more similar to beer um but uh so i was gonna say you know you can make sake here in the u.s but you can't actually make any type of alcohol in japan because it's not allowed you know the government doesn't want you to produce your own alcohol in japan but in the u.s you can you, you can you can brew your own beer at home just like that you can make your own sake and there are um, it's it's amazing. There are over like twenty, I don't know. There maybe thirty uh, craft sake breweries in the U.S. now. Oh, even in California, there are few. And and they can call it sake, as in yeah, they can call it seishu. They, they you can't call it seishu. Ah, yeah, so that's, that's the difference. Yeah. That's so it. seishu, it's like champagne. Right. Yes, exactly. Yes. Right, or or tequila. Yes. Yeah. So can I ask a question real quick? Because I I want to sound cool. When I talk about, I say seju, not if I'm really talking about seishu. sake. Seishu, not shochu. It's different to shochu. Seishu, seishu. yes, exactly. <laughs> so you could go to a Japanese restaurant and if you see uh -huh. a Japanese, you know, and you ask your, well, or a waiter um, and you ask for, can I get some seishu, please? Like, what kind of seishu do you have? And they'd be like, <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll get a menu. Or, you have to speak Japanese. First. Or it might be like, <laughs> uh, we don't have seishu. Is that you're and in then, a Japanese restaurant and you don't? And then have... I'll impress all my friends, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the table. But, okay, right, exactly. Seishu. That's right. what I'm. I'm asking for next time. Right. So seishu is Japanese sake that is from Japan. 
It's made in Japan. What about what if so? I I've heard of a a type of sake that that uses California produced rice that was that's exported to Japan, made into a sake and re-exported back to the U.S. Is that sake as well? That's、uh, fish. Oh yes, I don't think that's. Can be called seichi、oh. because the government、Oy. has to. That's interesting. Yeah, because they have they have to use the rice from Japan. All right, got、sake. it. So this is really interesting. Yeah, because I had that sake, but it's it's not sake. It's almost like saying I, whether you had champagne or sparkling. Oh,、wine. that's it. Right. The name of the brand is Uka. Yes, yes. It's called. We are at the same event. We were、yes. tasting that the brand, and I I really like that. <laughs> yeah, Uka is really nice, but that's not seichi. It's sake. But in Japan, you can't call it seishu, but it's still sake. Right. Sake is, yeah, sake is you know, sake. It's just a general、okay. term. Great. Well, I've learned a bit about sake now.、Um, so, what sets sake apart from other alcohol beverages? Do you think? It's a good question.、Um, so it's like I, I keep saying, it's like wine.、Uh, there's a lot of differences between you know different、uh, varieties, different、uh, types of sake. Uh, sake can be categorized、uh, into different、um, types, like daiginjo, ginjo, junmai. There are different types based on the rice polishing ratio.、Uh, so the more、uh, polish the the rice ingredient that you use for rice pr-、uh, production, the the higher、um, uh, aromatic components.、Uh, it's usually more cleaner. Um, so、uh, more rice remain in in the the, the rice batch.、Uh, that makes sake、uh, more You know, like、um, big body,、um, you know,、uh, more you know,、uh, rich in flavor. So there are different flavor profiles based on ingredients and how they use those ingredients, and then also regionality is fun part. You know, like、uh, northern part of Japan, Hokkaido is famous for super dry, crisp sake, and some other parts、um, they you, they make aromatic sake. So a、uh, whole different, you know,、um, types of sake, but、uh, a lot of people don't really know、um, that there's a bandwidth. You know,、uh, people think that it's sake is just one、uh, single type of beverage that they just take a shot of. You know, like vodka, and that make made made me kind of fr- frustrated.、So、that's、mm-hmm. why I started,、right. you know, this business to provide a wide variety of sake. Right. I think it's far more. I think it involves far more craftsmanship. Um, because you know, I only recently—I'm、well, not recently, but a few years ago—found out that you actually shave the rice. You know those rice grains, right?、Mm. The more you shave, the purer it gets, obviously, because you're going into the the inside of the rice.、Wow. So, I and know that. the 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 more you sharpen and shave each—I'm talking about each rice grain before you you go into the process of. Of cre-、uh, producing、um, the rice,、uh, sorry, sake. So the grade of how far you, the percentage of how much you shave off the outside of the each of the rice grain gives it the grade of the sake and the flavor. I guess of I guess the it with different water from where depending on which part of Japan you are get, with different minerals. And then, how much you shave off from the rice, and which rice you use, creates the original, the unique sake. Exactly. So the rice polishing has a lot to do with the the taste and also the price because the more polish,、uh, right, the ingredient,、um, there's there's less to work with, right? So you have to use more rice to make the same amount of sake. Okay.、Right. So it's more expensive when you polish the rice more. Um, and if you uh, generally uh, the rice is fifty percent of the rice is polished, so the you know the,、oh, the grain you're half, literally half taking half side, away.、Uh, you can call it daiginjo or junmai daiginjo, and that's the supposed to be the pre- most premium grade. But we, we don't like to say that it's more it's more delicious. It's just、right. personal preference. It's just more lighter in body and it's more、uh, fragrant usually, and then. You know,、uh, people are really going crazy about rice polishing, and then some brewer、uh, polish the rice down to one percent, <laughs> less than one percent even. You're throwing ninety percent away. That's a lot of. You have to, you know, polish a lot of rice、right. to make tiny、right. amount of sake, right? right? And that sake goes for about five thousand dollars 
in oh, US okay. at our store. So it's so expensive. I never had a chance to taste oh, it. Oh, you haven't had it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you how it's how that tastes. If you're poly, <laughs> he's, if you're poly, I, yeah. I don't think he's going to give you any free samples, though, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> at, like, that price. Yeah, if you're Can polishing off ninety you... percent <laughs> of the God. each of the rice grain, I'm talking about. That's crazy. Tiny, yeah, tiny. You're left with how much in order to create one cup of or one bottle of sake? That's incredible. I don't know, but I think we need to try it. So one of these times. Okay, I'm, now, now I'm curious. I've got to try it. So maybe we should start a uh, a GoFundMe for our <laughs> for our bottle. What's that called? That one percent sake. One percent. So the, the, this is particular brand called Komio from Tate no okay. Kawaburi. Uh, there they. they you know, um, launched this one percent rice polished mm. um, version of their brand, and it's it's super premium. Oh wow! Well, yeah, we'll put that it's on the list. I just put it on the list, Kimmy. Call me okay. <laughs> when, the, yes. Call me when the show uh, reaches <laughs> how many listeners? We'll go oh, have a bottle. A million. <laughs> a million. Okay, <laughs> I've got a real simple question. I'm in the hospitality business. I've been in it for forty years, and I've opened many many restaurants. And the the one thing. On the service side, that all the servers get really nervous when we when it comes to wine, wine, wine knowledge, and and presenting wine and talking about wine, and on the guest side at the table, they're also most of the time, I'd say eighty percent of the time, novice as well, and they don't they get nervous and they won't order off the list because they're just nervous to talk about it or or what they what the procedure is what they do is that the same way with sake wine that you're sake that you're that it, there's this um level of mystique like a barrier of entry and like if i don't know i'm not going to embarrass myself at a table and um and probably ask the question so is there a way that you break it down very simply for servers or for um for guests that are people that are enjoying sake, how do you break it down to a real easy to understand concept so that we don't feel nervous when we order it or when we try something new? Is there something that you teach people or that you tell them? Because I know that that is part of tipsysake.com. That's part of the business model, right? Is to um, open up, open it up to everyone so we all understand it better and drink it more often. Right. You, know, you know what I do, Jeremiah, when I go to a restaurant, or especially Japanese restaurant in Japan, I just ask for, what do you recommend? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's always and the that, easiest. That's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the easiest and the best way. And usually, Japanese restaurants with that, that host um, or have a selection of sake, they would have their best, their best recommendation for the food you order. So... Um, and then you could ask whether if it's sweet or if you want it light, or if you want it dry. Um, so those are typical words, but I would love to hear what Kenki <laughs> has to say. So that's, I think that you, you per answered that perfectly. You know, if the uh, restaurant has a long list of sake, that means the restaurant is really proud of their selection. And if you, and there's like 20,000 sushi or Japanese restaurants in the US and most of them only have like uh, just a, a couple of different types of sake on their menu. And then usually those sake are made in the U.S., like really low mm. quality, cheap sake mm. that they just warm it up at the, on, in the microwave and just serve, you know. And it's just, you know, a lot of people are okay with that because it's mysterious and it's, you know, fun. They are going out and eat. They want to experience something different. So it's hot alcohol. You know, what more can you get, right? So that's just, you know, people are happy about that. But that's like, that's it's been like that for the last 20, 30 years. But now there's more and more restaurants that uh, they are carrying authentic uh, list of sake, and then in those in that case, you know, you can just ask the waiter casually, like, "What do you recommend?" Well, I'm I'm eating sashimi first, and then you know, white fish, uh, maybe snapper. What do you recommend? And they, they would probably say something like, you know, daiginjo, ginjo type of sake because it's more aromatic. You don't, uh, uh, you know, white fish don't that uh, doesn't have a strong uh, flavor, so you can have that, you know, aromatic sake to complement the the flavor, and then or vice versa for uh, dishes with uh, you know strong flavor. Uh, you will go with like dry sake, so it doesn't really fight. 
Okay. So is it similar to the rules of wine? Pairing it's exactly wine the same. Exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Pairing goes like, you know, opposite uh, flavors or similar mm -hmm. flavors to, you know, complement right. the pairing. Yeah. Same way. That's awesome. Well, hey, we're learning. Kimmy, I don't know about <laughs> exactly. you, but I'm learning. No, me too. Hey, our special guest today is Genki Ito. He's the CEO of tipsysake.com. You can get access to sip, tipsy sake. I'm already, I sound like I'm tipsy when I say tipsy. It's such a fun company name. Get access to tipsy sake's 2024 deals. Just go there and sign up. I'm going to give you the website, tipsysake.com. Check it out. There's a lot to learn on there. And I really, we're going to talk about it, I guess, after the after this break, and get more into it. But there's a lot there to help you. Genke, you are you're really uh, accomplishing your goal of uh, exposing the world to sake in a simple way on the website. There's a lot to dig into and it's a lot of fun. And I encourage you to go there again, tipsy sake.com before we go to a break though, Mr. Kimmy cut though, he's in the music business. He's a, I like to call him a star maker, <laughs> but Kimmy has some of the best playlists that I've ever heard. And I've only heard about seven of them so far. This is uh, number six, actually, for the show today. Kimmy, who are we listening to? Because you bring new artists to every single Kimmy Kato show interview. You bring in original artists and you bring new songs, new music every time. So this is the place to check in and get your the latest in Japan, uh, Japanese music. Um, Kimmy does, has, does not disappoint. We've got seven new songs and what are we going to listen to right now kimmy so we're now playing we're going to play uh the song blackbird because many of you will probably know about that know the song uh it's a song by the beatles uh, but interpreted by a jazz pianist she's a tremendous highly acclaimed jazz pianist from japan called hiromi um and it's uh so I thought that today we would pair the sake conversations with with jazz music from Japan. Um, so, yeah. so this is the first song I want to introduce. The beautiful pairing. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Kimmy Kato Show. <laughs> 